I want to draw your attention, folks, to some absolutely gobsmacking data that was put together by The Telegraph in an article today about the state of policing in this country. More specifically, how they are wasting all of their resources on these stupid non-crime hate incidents with a huge, huge cost, it looks like, to actually important crime, like burglaries, thefts and whatnot. This is scary, the data that is coming out in this article. So the Telegraph, their headline says, how police are cracking down on hate speech while burglaries and shoplifting go unpunished. As rates of routine police work collapse, the investigation into Alison Pearson raises serious questions about policing of free speech. So obviously in the summer when we had the riots going on, there was a lot of talk about the policing of free speech, quite rightly. And now it is hot in the news again, as we found out that Telegraph um, uh, reporter or columnist, rather, uh, Alison Pearson, uh, on, on the morning of Armistice Day, uh, she had the police arrive and say that she's being investigated for some tweet that she wrote over um, a year ago. And Alison may be a high profile figure, but there are tens and tens of thousands uh, of people uh, across the country who are not big figures, who are not known names, who have the police going after them uh, to record these non-crime hate incidents, as they call them, NCHIs. What on earth does that mean? Let's get into it. This is a little bit different, uh, these non-crime hate incidents, to the more uh, serious cases where people uh, we saw were put in, in prison for Facebook posts and whatnot. The people who were put in prison for Facebook posts, um, most of them were put in on the basis that their tweets or Facebook posts were inciting violence. There are many of those that I believe uh, were not ex inciting violence and that they were wrongly put in prison. Um, but that is where they have supposedly actually um, done something uh, that gives them a criminal record, puts them in prison. What we're talking about here is the more low level stuff that you can have put on your record for something that you post, um, which means that you could struggle to get a job, potentially uh, you know, in, indefinitely. This is really scary stuff. So um, you've got tens of thousands of these non-crime hate incidents, and we'll have a look at some of the numbers on that. Um, uh, since 2014, I think, which is when they I think when they started to be introduced. Um, now, what are these? So it's uh, speech or post believed by police to be motivated by prejudice. Does that sound a bit vague to you? It sounds a bit vague to me. And you know what vague means? It means that they can count anything that they, re that they want as a non-crime hate incident. Okay, I post on Twitter that I don't like Keir Starmer. Oh, well, the, if the police officer doesn't like it, they can knock at my door and say that what I said was prejudiced. And then I'll have a nice non-crime hate incident on my name forever. Now, these don't meet the threshold of being a crime. That's why they're called non-crime hate incidents. So you might think, oh, well, it doesn't matter. I mean, why? Do, first of all, why do they even bother if it's not even a crime? I mean, I thought police officers, they're meant to, you know, go after proper crimes, uh, but they feel the need to go around recording these non-crime hate, hate incidents. I don't know why, maybe so that they can make a nice spreadsheet uh, that says, oh, the data shows us that white people are the most hateful uh, in Britain. And then they can say that white supremacy um, is and racism is a huge problem in this country. I, I, I don't know why they bother. But does it matter to you if you get a non-crime hate incident because you wrote a post that was prejudice? online well yes absolutely because even though you haven't committed a crime the individuals are logged by police and the incidents can even turn up in background checks known as uh well the dbs checks I i'm sure you all know what they are i have had to do dbs checks for a lot of roles that i have had to take on and i'm sure many of you lot when you have applied for jobs i mean it's pretty standard now that they do a dbs background check almost when you apply for any job uh, it would seem. Can you imagine trying to get a job when you do not, when you are not able to have a clear DBS check? You know, we know that when they do these DBS checks, if anything flags up, even if you try and explain it to them, they will just pick a candidate that has a clear DBS check. So if you wrote on Facebook something that might be seen as prejudice, right? So if I write on Facebook or on X, stop the boats, for example and a police officer decides that they think that's prejudiced, 
Maybe I'll never be able to get a job again. Maybe I will never seek employment again. How terrifying is that? That is the world that we are living in. It is scary enough living in a world where you could lose your job if your boss sees that you wrote something political on Facebook that's a bit right wing and that they don't like. That's scary enough. But now knowing you could end up with a record with a non-crime hate incident on, which makes it near impossible for you to ever get a job again just because you write a post that some police officer deems prejudice, that... That, that seems pretty pretty horrendous to me. That is not what I call democracy in a free country. Now, the stats that I wanted to point out to you was how this has, you know, affected um, other uh, policing of other crimes, actual important crimes. And we'll get on to that in a moment. Um, but here we have just an example. So the non-crime hate incidents, we have some police forces that have massively increased their recording of non-crime hate incidents. So in one year, for example, Staffordshire Police increased um, their recording of non-criminal uh, hate incidents by 140%. I mean, what are these guys doing? I mean, they just go around all day sitting on Facebook. I guess it's easier to sit in your chair and sit on your computer and just search through Facebook for people who are prejudiced than it is to actually get in your police car and go around the streets and actually uh, deal with real crime. I mean, it is just genuinely bonkers. And then th this is the scary stuff, guys. This is the real effect of this. Now, I'm not saying this is a... These figures that we're going to look at in a second are completely as a consequence of the non-crime hate, in hate incidents, but i got a feeling it's related. I think, you know, if they took all of their resources that they're putting into policing these non-crime hate incidents and they put it into solving actual crime, these figures that we're going to take a look at now would not be as shocking. So since 2016, the Telegraph has uh, revealed in this article, vehicle theft charges have fallen from 9% to, wait for it, 2.7%. 2.7%, 9% to 2.7%. And that's only from 2016 for vehicle theft charges. So your car gets stolen? Tough shit, mate. Because the police, they're busy uh, going and knocking on the door of Bill, who posted on Facebook that he wants to stop the boats. They won't come if your car is stolen. I am sorry. Domestic burglary charges have fallen from 7%. To 4.5%. Your house gets burgled. All your belongings. Your jewellery. Your wedding ring. It's all taken from you. I'm sorry mate. The police ain't coming. They are too busy looking at your Facebook posts instead. Overall, just 1 in 14 crimes are solved. Down from 1 in 8 in 2016. That is a huge, huge change in the figures since 2016. Uh, this is absolutely shocking. When the figures are that bad, they absolutely need to be putting a, as many resources as they can into solving these crimes here, not non-crime hate incidents. It is bonkers. And then just look, let's look at how many arrests have been made because you might say from the last figures that uh, there just aren't enough police officers, but actually if you break it down to arrests per police officer, these are massively reducing as well. So you see that it used to be around 2008 kind of time, above 10 average number of arrests made per year by police officers. And then it has fallen right down to uh, 4.5 arrests per officer. You see there's a little bit of an uptick happening between 2023 and 2024. So maybe there's some improvement happening. Now, there are a couple of explanations for this potentially. So either one, the country is becoming more behaved. There are fewer people to arrest because everyone's behaving themselves. Crimes are not taking place. Well, it seems like half as much, according to this. And that is why there are fewer arrests. I highly doubt that. Okay, I think we can all see with our own eyes in our communities that crime is on the rise. So the other explanation is they ain't bothering. They're too busy locking people, well, not locking people, well, some pe locking up some people for Facebook posts, but for many, many others who just write something that's a little bit edgy and a little bit prejudiced, um, as they say, they're busy knocking on their doors, telling them off for their speech. That, I think, is absolutely appalling. And I think Elon Musk, if we go back to um, 
We had uh, Elon Musk uh, in this photo here of Alison Pierce. And the reason why we're talking about him is because he, of course, has taken um, to X and has said this has to stop with regards uh, to Alison uh, Pearson, uh, the lady who works for the Telegraph, who has been put under investigation. It does have to stop. And we've now got Elon Musk uh, in a very high position uh in Doge, as it is called, the Department of Government Efficiency uh, in the US. He is best buddies with Donald Trump. I really hope that he is able to get Trump to put pressure on Keir Starmer and Britain to stop this absolute tyranny. I think it is extremely terrifying what is going on in this country with free speech. I think, you know, it's probably only a matter of time before I have a non-crime hate incident uh, to my name for the stuff that I put online. It is really, really terrifying. Let me know in the comments below if you think Elon Musk will be able to pressure uh, Donald Trump uh, to get Keir Starmer to make any changes or will this tyranny continue indefinitely? Let me know in the comments below. I'm Chloe Dobbs. Thank you for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe to The Reason channel so you don't miss out on any of our videos. I'll see you in the next one.